Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about women in World War II, and we will be discussing how warfare of the 20th century gave women the opportunities to challenge gender roles by becoming a huge part of the workforce as never seen before. Women began to find jobs and duties outside the household that were typically only job duties of the men. The opportunities allowed women to drop the aprons and their skillets, put on those work boots, take up the technician's tools in hand, and head to the factories and military bases. They began to prove to the world that women helped play a larger role than simply caring for the home. Hi, I'm Erica Fuller. I'm Mallory Bundy. I'm Anna Horn. And I'm Mariella Perez. And we're talking about women in World War II. Quite a huge mess and a difficult time for the people on a global level. For the most part, World War II was brought about by unresolved issues stemming from World War I. The end of World War I brought about lingering issues of European superiority by certain social groups such as the Soviet Union. Barbaric acts of superiority by these social groups against millions of minorities, as you would guess, did not sit well with the rest of the world. Tyrants such as Mussolini of Italy and Hitler of Austria came to power in the 1930s. Anti-colonial movements multiplied. India saw independent trading rights outside of European authority. Everyone disregarded the rules of the League of Nations. Racial superiority of many European powers brought about mass genocides of groups of minorities such as the Jews, Gypsies, homosexuals, and Slavs. World War II had bigger guns, poison gas, war trenches, social hierarchy, and guerrilla warfare. No, not that kind of guerrilla. Economic crisis and war debts continued to the strangle the middle class workers and rival alliances of countries formed. World War II truly proved to be on a global scale as warfare spread from Europe to Asia, Africa, and the Americas. As the war carried on and more and more soldiers were taken from home and treaded across seas, there grew a greater necessity for women to rejoin the workforce, and in even greater numbers than before. Women put the uniforms back on, returned to the factories, became telephone operators, office workers, and technicians. Women also worked directly under the war, being trained to work as doctors and nurses in response to battle wounds and fatalities. By 1944, about 18 million women were in the workforce. Many discouraged women to work during the war for fear that women would be incapable of maintaining the home and the number of juvenile delinquents would rise. But war efforts increased and the work companies would go door to door asking for female workers. Wartime propaganda for women empowered men as such as <coughs> fictional characters Rosie the Riveter embodied the women of countries such as America and encouraged women to work within factories, building aircrafts, warships, and military weaponry. Compared to European countries, the U.S. had far greater numbers of women entering the workforce, particularly because of the home front of the U.S. had less warfare and predominantly all bombings and battle invasions occurred overseas in European locations. Mm -hmm. With most of the war occurring in countries such as France, Britain, and Spain, fewer women were finding job opportunities as the entire economic system was at a standstill and the countries were in wartime crisis. Women between the ages of 18 to 30, however, managed to join war causes. In places like Britain, several million women went to work where there was a shortage of about 1.5 million workers. The pay rate was about 85% of what men were making. Women became involved in warfare by enrolling in the Women's Auxiliary Army Foundation, Women's Royal Naval Service, and the Salvation Army. They were provided with non-combat tasks. About 11,000 women also became enrolled in America's National Coast Guard. Most women were laid off after the war, but those that stayed in the workforce were reduced in lower paying jobs. There were, however, more women that remained in the workforce after the war than there were before the war began. Although it was frowned upon for women to continue working after the war, women's equality filtered through society. Women gained rights such as equal opportunities for work and higher wages, as well as the safety benefits working in factories. Women dressed in ways they saw fit, not how others told them to dress as well. We would not be where we are today without the progression of women during World War II in the 20th century. So show off those ankles, ladies. <laughs> 